Hi YouTube, this is Jake Jason here, and today we will be demonstrating iOS 10 Beta 1 on an iPad Air 2. So let's get started. So first of all, we come to this new lock screen right here. And it's kind of interesting because the notifications and the time are displayed differently, of course. And it almost seems like there's some wasted real estate because the notification doesn't go all the way across. Now in notifications, you can see this new UI. So when I slide left, it brings me to touch ID or passcode. And when I slide right, it allows me to clear the notification. However, when you slide all the way to the right, it does not automatically clear like mail messages. So when you swipe left, you get to this new notification center widget based system. There are no events and no upcoming reminders for me. And there do not appear to be any uh, Siri app suggestions, news or music. When I click edit, it again brings me to my touch ID or passcode. I'll enter in my touch ID and it'll show me the widgets that I can bring up. It's kind of interesting because when you touch from the left or right hand side of the screen, you can't scroll. You can only scroll from the direct middle of the screen that shows the table view. So as an example, well, let's try and rearrange this. Let's bring the Siri app suggestions to the left hand panel and click done and we can see that it rearranged how it all worked. There's also a search button here when you tap search and then it looks like there's some new icons for that, especially for the maps aspect. And it looks like the Siri finally populated some suggestions, music news, notes, and messages. When we go back to the major home screen, you can see right here that when we swiped the other way, we get to the camera view and the camera view appears to be a little bit different. Now we have this option right here to increase and decrease the zoom, which can be helpful on an iPad type device, and it moves some of the settings that traditionally were by that new zoom panel over to the right hand side, like HDR, time delay, and camera switch. Sliding out does not appear to be as easy as sliding in. One might have to click the home button actually to get back to this lock screen. So now when one does touch ID, it doesn't automatically unlock. That was a big part of the keynote address about this new version of iOS, that things were unlocking too fast and you couldn't see your notifications. So now you actually have to press into the home button to see your home screen after you've verified your touch ID or entered in your passcode. So now we get to the home screen. So to start off, let's demonstrate one big new feature. It's a feature that a lot of people have been requesting, and that was the ability to delete apps. So as you can see right here, now all the apps are wiggling. Apps that traditionally couldn't have been deleted are now able to be deleted off of the device. So let's take, for example, the mail app. When you remove the app from the home screen, it will delete its data, but it won't delete all the documents and data that are stored in iCloud. So that's really important because what that does is it says that the data on the back of the app will remain there for your other devices. So we'll click remove. Mail's gone now. So now let's check how you can reinstall mail. So we'll go to the app store. We'll wait for the feature to load, and then we'll tap here, Mail. So in this new version of the App Store, you can see that there are advertisements. For instance, the advertisement that came up here is Microsoft Outlook, but you can still re-download the original Apple Mail app here. Right now it appears that there are no review sections, nor is there any more than one screenshot, but that may change. There is a full description, as one can see right here. So now when we click Download, it didn't appear like it had a download. It appeared as though it was already on the device and all it had to do was unhide it. So we can drag that right back down into the bottom bar. So now we can see we've just got a notification. This notification shows the new notification user interface. And when we slide down, we can see that there are no longer widgets in a today view and a widget view, but rather just notifications. So this greatly simplifies it. So now let's tap it. And as you can see, it loads the settings app. Now let's check out the new Clock app. Clock app has this new dark theme and it also has a brand new design which allows you to kind of see a more interactive approach. In previous versions of the world clock view was rather bland. Now it has this entire map view. It shows whether it's nighttime or daytime and in what part of the world that's occurring in. It appears as though when you tap on the individual clocks, it doesn't bring up a larger view like it used to, but you can scroll for more. Under the alarm, everything has kind of just become darker but no major user interface tweaks other than the color. There's a new tab called Bedtime. Bedtime allows you to set quick alarms and make for healthy sleep. So when we click Get Started, it says what time would you like to wake up? I'll say six o'clock. And it says which days should the alarm go off? Let's say that it goes off during the week, so now on the weekends. How many hours do I need each night? Eight hours, that's fine. Next, would you like a bedtime reminder? 
yeah, we can do 15 minutes before bedtime. And then what do I want to hear? When I click wake up sound, it gives me a bunch of different options, such as the default radar, apex, beacon, bulletin, and all of the default wake up sounds and noises that have been part of iOS since iOS 7. Now we can see staying consistent. There seems to be a little bit of an issue with the graphic here. As you can see, it's very pixelated where it shows 10.30 to 6.30. All right, let's click Save, and you can see right here, it shows this nice little graphic, and I'm now moving it all around, showing me how much sleep I have, how much I can get, and readjusting the alarm for my wake up and sleep hours. Now let's check the stopwatch. Stopwatch has that same new darker design, but no major interface tweaks. And the same goes for timer. So let's now check out the new Maps app. Maps app has been completely redesigned. As you can see, it has a simpler user interface. And because of that, such as reducing the width of the navigation bar and moving some user interface icons around, they were able to actually make it seem like the maps take up more of the device's screen. And so the maps are the center. Let's click, where's my current location? You can see here that it shows my current location just like it previously would. If we click info, it brings up the map settings. Now, as you can see, the navigation bar here has increased in size. It's almost doubled. The map setting is approximately the same font as the previous title, but the done button seems to have gotten a lot larger. Everything here seems to be the default settings that typically are included inside of the Maps app. There's also a new little weather extension that's been added to the bottom right-hand corner of the Maps app. Underneath the status bar, you can see that it has that blurred out design. You can see if I move it right here to the different colors, right underneath the clock. So that makes it so that you can still read the status bar, but you don't have this colorful thing that's behind it. That's one blend color. It actually absorbs the color behind it. I believe that that was pioneered first in the news app last year. Let's check out the home app. The home app is completely new. Because we don't have any HomeKit devices near us right now, we probably won't be able to demonstrate it. But let's take a look. So let's get started. We'll call this home name My Home. Let's choose from the existing photos. Let's check from the home wallpaper. Looks like there are only two right now. Let's go with the green one. We'll set that. Click Done. And there we go. We have My Home. We can edit it. You can see where it is. We can add an accessory. We can add a scene. We can check the different rooms. Right now there's only one room. We can add rooms. And an automation, it shows right here, that it allows your accessories to perform actions based on criteria. The user interface of this screen may take a little bit of work because it seems as though the title is inset a bit from the top, which is inconsistent with other apps, but we'll see. So now let's check out the new news app. The new news app has a new icon, as you can see. It creates the news, the in right there with kind of a different shape. So let's check out what's new. The new for you section, notifications, and subscription-based content. So let's customize some notifications here. What channels will give us notifications? Let's just go with top news stories for now. So now it's preparing my news for me. When you tap on one of the stories, as you can see, it brings up the familiar format that it used to be. It also brings up new buttons like like and dislike. The favorites, the explorer, the search, and the saved are still there. So now let's check out the new split screen Safari view. So we'll load Safari and as you can see, I have two tabs up, Google and Bing. All you have to do to see both tabs is tap and drag one tab to the right and it'll open up and create a split screen Safari view. You can interact with each one separately. Although you cannot adjust the size, it looks like both have to share 50% of the screen real estate. One of the major new features that's available is the new messages feature. So we first go to messages and we can see that it's blank. So now I'm going to send a message to myself and show you the different available emotions. So I'm gonna type hello, tap this blue arrow right here, and now I can select the level I want. So let's go with slam. Unfortunately, I was unable to get this device to send any emotional messages. And so I'm going to send it some so that you guys can see what it looks like. Here's what slam looks like. Here's loud. Here's gentle, and here's invisible. I'll scratch that off. Now let's try and send a sketch. So, 
Let's do a sketch. Hi. Then we'll do a tap. I guess it already sent itself and it's playing the message. So with the new camera icon, you can actually see a mini view of the camera right from within the Messages app. So you can take a photo and you can directly send it or you can select one from your photo library. With this new feature right here, you can actually take an extension from one of the following apps which is installed on the device and you can send it to people. Let's check out Classic Mac. Let's do the Happy Mac. And let's send it. But wait, let's add some emotion to this. So right now you can see notification from the reminder that we had previously set in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it and I'm going to say, remind me in 10 minutes. So now let's write a thumbs up. And you can see it attached a little emoji of a thumbs up right to that image. If we went to Apple Music, you can see that you can listen to music to share right from within the Messages app. So that's a quick demo of the new Messages app. Last but not least for this video, let's check out the redesigned Apple Music app. So here's the Apple Music app. Here are a bunch of songs that are currently in my library. When I tap library, I can see different things like recently added, playlists, artists, albums, songs, and downloaded music. These are probably sortings that I can do. Again, the user interface is kind of interesting here. The fact that there seems to be a little bit of wasted space on the left-hand side with large margins and on the top with rather large margins before the title. When I tap edit though, I do get a really nice transition, just like that, where I can edit exactly the ways to filter it. So let's enable some more of these so we can see what it looks like. And there it is. On the For You section, you can see that it'll find some music for me. When I tap on the JC, I can see my name and my account. With Browse, the new Browse function allows you to browse new music. When you tap Browse, you can also get one of these new UIs that shows you the type of new music and what type of things you could be looking for. One interesting thing is that this popover seems to have a lot of wasted space below it, not only the margins on the left and the right, but the margin on the bottom. Let's check out radio. They have definitely redesigned the radio portion, as you can see right here. And finally, search. Search seems to be its own tab in this new iOS 10 music app. And that's really important because previously, search was very cumbersome and hard to get to. Now it's right there. And search is one of those things. When you come to the music app, you should be able to search for the exact song that you want or the exact artist that you want and search all of Apple Music, not just your library. It is interesting though, because the user interface of the tab bar here is quite different from the rest of the operating system. So it will be interesting to see if Apple kind of pivots toward this new design paradigm or if this design paradigm is just for this app. We've just taken a brief look at iOS 10 Beta 1 and an iPad Air 2. We've noticed there are a couple of incongruous things, but I think that they definitely have time to work out some of these bugs before the public release this fall. Thank you, YouTube, for watching this video, and this is Jake Chason, and I'm signing off.